Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to a video with this Nissan 370Z, a car which I think, well, I think it's drastically underrated in 2022. That's my notion anyway. And so today we're going to find out if that is actually the case or not. But theoretically speaking, on paper, I think these cars are massively overlooked. So the Nissan Z journey started many, many decades ago, as you all know. This is actually the 370Z, the sixth iteration of a Nissan Z car, so to speak. But most closely matched to this was obviously the 350Z, which came before it, of which I've had a little bit of experience in. And I've always been a little bit fond of those cars. But in 2009 or so, when this came along, which you have to remind yourself is actually 13 years ago now, it was a big improvement. Actually slightly smaller in terms of length than the 350Z. Bit wider though, bit of a wider track and a bigger power plant with a 3.7 litre V6, which I think is a really, really cool engine. Actually propels this car to 60, even with the six speed manual that this has in under five seconds, which is stupendously fast. I think when the 370 came along, it immediately dated the 352. Now, some people obviously appreciate that more classic look, but for me, the 350 seems a little bit like of an ugly cousin to this because this is just much more beefy, modern. The twin pipes at the back just look spot on. And this one's had a few tasteful mods, notably the repowdered wheels, which look great. And it's in a great color too. But I think all in all, these are really good looking cars that you don't see all that often on the road. Now, one of the reasons I think that this is potentially a really overlooked car is of course the price. You can pick these things up for less than £10,000. Admittedly, that would be a high mileage, maybe, you know, more ropey example, but you can actually get them for around eight to £9,000 if you want to go really high mileage. But if you have a budget that's between sort of 12, 13 and 15K, you get yourself a really good one of these. I bet you haven't put much thought to a 370Z. You probably don't know all that much about them. And now you're looking at it, you're probably thinking, well, is it actually any good? Because it is a good looking car. So that is what I aim to sort of find out for myself today, because in true honesty, I've always really liked these cars. Fair enough, my friend years ago bought a 350Z, so I was exposed to that sort of scene, I suppose, quite early on. Always really liked that car. I thought it was punching way above its weight in terms of value. But then these really caught my eye because of those looks that just look so, so cool. So yeah, let's try and find out today then that if you know this is underrated, is there a reason there, that price? Or is it just because people don't really look here? Let's find out. Okay then, so inside the 370Z for the very first time. And can we just very quickly address the elephant in the room? The elephant being build quality. Now, let me be totally honest with you. I am a bit of a German fanboy. I've never actually bought a Japanese car for myself. And I'm with the German fanboys on build quality. Germans do do it better. And this Nissan does show signs of being a cheaper car. I'll be totally honest, the materials in here are not as premium as you would find in say a BMW or Porsche rival for certain. Buttons at times feel a little bit plasticky, but can I just say, it's not as bad as you might think. Even all of this sort of nastier looking stuff here is soft touch. Actually, the stitching in the material on the central console are nice. The wheel feels really, really good and premium. And then you've got the sort of aluminium effect dials in front of you, which are very, very solid. And just driving this down the road, there's not really any rattles or clunks that you would sort of see that they shouldn't be there. It's, it's all pretty good and feels quite solid, I have to say. Even here on the sides, I don't know what material it is, but it feels good. It doesn't feel cheap. It looks cheap in places and there will be various buttons like these radio controls in particular that feel cheap. But all in all, it's not like you're in something from a previous century. It's maybe a little bit behind the quality you'd find on BMW or Porsche, for an example. But really not something that would put me off if I'm being totally, totally honest. Can I just say the main touch points, the wheel, the gear stick, the pedals feel good. And that's really all that matters for a car like this, which is a driver's car. Speaking of which, let's do some driving, shall we? So it's telling me I need to pop the clutch down, which is there, and, and it sounds very, very good. The car's warm, I'm just gonna give it a little blip before we set going. Wow. Let's put it into first and just set off nice and gently. It's a very on off, this clutch. See the diff there, locking the wheels a little bit. And just set off slowly. 
And the first impressions of the car, apart from the noise, are honestly how tight the car feels. And tight as in solid, put together really well. The steering, there's absolutely no play in it. It's pretty responsive. But what is most responsive of all is the throttle. Zero delay, four grand on the throttle. And the thing takes off. And if we pop on the auto downshift mode, pop it into third, instantly does it. Second. Oh, that is very, very good. Very, very good indeed. So let's have a little look at the acceleration then. We're doing about 10 miles an hour. I'm just gonna build it up to 3000 RPM, be synthetic to the clutch here. So from 20 in first gear, 60 very quick and you know what it feels pretty quick as well I definitely think it's helped by the noise that we're getting and the fact that this revs all the way up to seven and a half thousand rpm it's very addictive actually very addictive to get on the throttle and this handling yes this car is on coilovers which are non-standard so much improved I'm sure but it's really, really good. Absolutely no body roll at all, probably the coilovers, but you would expect looking at the car, even now, that it would be a little bit wallowy. It's not in the slightest. It's really, really planted and feels great. One thing you can sense is it's quite a heavy car, but it doesn't really detract from the driving experience whatsoever because you sort of have enough power from that 3.7 litre V6, so the car's not slow and it still, you know, feels very nimble. I like. Wow. That is an engine and a half, let me tell you. along at 70 miles an hour then the downpipe you wouldn't know it's there because there's no drone whatsoever which is a really nice thing actually the back box elite you would get drone pretty much all the time but we're cruising along at 70 just under 3000 rpm no drone really really nice but as soon as you into fourth <laughs> it's right there when you want it but it's a very nice thing like i mentioned it sits lovely it's obviously very firm with the coilovers but sits super nice i could see myself doing lots of distance in this car you've got cruise control really good air conditioning obviously heated seats these are electronic as well these seats which is a nice touch something you might not expect on a car like this it's basically everything you need it's not too busy i love i absolutely love analog dials and of this we've got big tachometer big rev counter and then i like the little display on the left to show my mars Magallan, which currently is 17. sorry cole and a few other things, we've got the range on there, which is going down drastically quickly. Outside temperature, 17 degrees today, miracle. I also love the dials we've got on the left here, temperature, battery voltage, and the time. Love that, it's a really nice touch, makes the car feel a little bit more special. One big cup holder in the middle here, next to the heated seat controls, two settings of the heated seats, high and low, very simple. And because this isn't a GT model, it doesn't have the big navigation display, but it does have a nice big storage unit in the middle there. So I do think these cars are overlooked. Maybe there's things that put people off. Bad snobs, it's a Nissan, it's a little bit... Mm. But, big Z in front of you to remind you that it's not just any Nissan. And the build quality thing, it's not a myth, it is true. You can definitely, you know, there's a tangible sense that this car was put together with cheaper materials. But from my perspective, as a bit of a petrol head, uh, it doesn't really bother me in the slightest because it's totally acceptable in here if not nice, maybe just not as nice as a German rival. However, for me, it's all about the drive and this thing handles stupendously well, dare I say it, better than a Z4M, I really do think. And that power plant is just heavenly. And I really like that downshift feature, to be honest, I thought I'd probably be having it off the entire time because, oh, I want to do it myself, which I do enjoy doing myself. But if I do turn it off and try and show you 
me doing it myself. Here we go, second into first. Not a bad job actually, but nowhere near as the car could do it. And it means you can downshift aggressively without having to worry about the clutch engagement too much because it does it all for you. It's really impressive piece of technology actually and something I'd like to see in other manual driver's cars like this. The sound on this is just really well judged as well because although it is very loud actually when you're on it, it doesn't drone like I mentioned. And because it is a 3.7 litre V6, it feel, it's got, it's got the meat behind it to warrant this sound. You know, if you did this, you're driving a 1.6 Ford Fiesta and it sounded like this, it's sort of a little bit, dare I say it, chavvy because it's a 1.6, but because this is such a big block, a 3.7, it warrants the noise. Speaking of noise then, I think it's only right that we crack a couple of windows, take it through a tunnel and hear how this thing sounds. Here we go. Into third, into second. Noise! It's one of the most addictive pedals I've ever had the pleasure of touching with my foot. <laughs> wow, I love this thing. So I did go into this review genuinely quite interested to see what the 370's head was like, not so much because I wanted to make a video, but honestly, because I've always liked these, and looking at the prices, I've always wondered about having one. Now, here's my honest uh, sort of conclusion and opinion on that matter. After driving this car, does it set my world on fire so much that I need to go and buy one immediately? No, I'll be honest, it doesn't. It's not quite perfect, however, Given the price that these things are, I do really think it's a great idea to go and buy one. And I'm not going to say no, there's a certain car which you all know about which I'm trying to buy first. But this could certainly be a car that I would look to buy in the future. Being honest, if I had the money, I would buy one immediately because I really like this car. I'm interested to know what you guys think. Have you driven one of these? If so, what did you think? And if not, what's your opinion on them?